but let's go ahead and get started. Um, how many people have a cell phone? All right, if you wouldn't mind, put that puppy on vibrate or silent. Uh, and I appreciate that. Okay, uh, we are happy to have with us today Ron and Claire Wheeler and Nicole Bennett from Wheeler Advertising. Uh, Ron and Claire have been in the advertising business for over uh, 25 working years uh, in different uh, agencies. Now together at Wheeler Advertising, which was formed by Ron in uh, 1992, they've experienced firsthand the dramatic impact of how the internet and now social media has had uh, an impact on all marketing initiatives out there. So uh, five years ago, they established a division called Social Dot Motive which is now a team of eight individuals who spend 100% of their time building effective social media programs for businesses across the country. Uh, those, uh, a couple of those programs would include the industry's own GoBowling.com. Uh, they're here today to share with you the knowledge that they have about social media for small businesses. So if you would, please uh, give them a warm welcome. All right. Do something else and wake up a little bit. Let's go. I know it's the afternoon after lunch, but certainly appreciating everybody taking the time to come in and uh, spend this time with us. I promise you, when you leave today, you're going to have lots of valuable ideas and thoughts to take back to your business. I'd like to start by claiming one truth out there in the marketplace, and it's a simple one, but write it down. The consumer is in control. The consumer is in control. You see, eight, seven, eight years ago, the big media channels were in control. TV, radio, you know, they, they, they had a monopoly, the yellow pages, the newspaper, on distribution. And on content, they went out to the people you wanted to talk to. You had very little control. They had all the control. Now the consumer has it because of one thing, technology. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of distribution channels out there at your fingertips to be able to supply your targeted market with content that's relative to your business at the pace that you want to deliver it and how you want to deliver it. So the consumer's in charge now. They get their information, knowledge, sports, weather, news, whatever they want it, how they want it, what time of the day they want it. We have to recognize that truth. With that, then, we can start thinking about how can I take advantage of that and get a competitive edge in my business. And that's what we want to share with you today is how to take social media and make it a distribution network for you that allows you to provide relevant, and relevant is the key word, content to a group of people that mean something to your business. That's a powerful tool if you do it properly. We want to give you enough nuggets today to take that and go home and make a difference. My name is Ron Wheeler and I'm the CEO of Wheeler Advertising and Social Motive. We've been in business since 1990, uh, late 1991 actually, and we have offices in Arlington, Albuquerque, Denver, Birmingham, and Newark. Five years ago we started Social Motive, recognizing in today's world it's critical that we have an integrated marketing plan for people. We've got to make sure all of our marketing pieces, digital, social, traditional, work together. We want to share with you what we've learned in the Social Motive area. Claire Wheeler, my wife, the Vice President of Wheeler Advertising, the General Manager of Social Motive, and Nicole Bennett here is a Senior Account Supervisor with our Social Motive group. Now, get a good look at those faces. All right, memorize them because for the next day and a half, I want you to stock them like you do on Facebook, right? Stock them, get all the information you can out of them over the next two days. That's what they're here for. Don't be bashful. Get up to them, ask questions, because there's a ton of information and knowledge there. What we're going to go over today are, are several things. Choosing a social media platform, social media best practices, specific platforms and how those best practices for those platforms work, uh, good ideas, and at the end we're going to be open for questions. So I know you're going to have a lot of thoughts. Write them down so that we can get all the information out to everybody, and then we'll go through all those questions at the end. And again, if you don't get all the answers you need or some other come up, those two faces are your rock and roll stars that you want to stock over the next uh, uh, two days. Social media. I've got a couple of things I want to share with you, and then I'm going to turn it over to them to really rock and roll with you. As a business owner, I know you probably get 10, 15, 20 calls a day of somebody wanting to 
tell you how to spend your money with advertising and marketing. Same thing happens in social media. Look at all those different platforms you might have to spend money in social media. Social media is not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's not you know, Hootsuite, it's not you know, all these different things. Social media is just a way to create a distribution network and connect to your consumers. So there's a lot of choices here. A lot of places to make mistakes, waste time, spend money, lose money, waste time. We don't want that to happen to you today. So we want to share with you some of our experiences of doing this for over five years and with people all across the country in a variety of different industries. We think we can help save you some time, energy, and money. So one of the things that we recognize is that the website certainly is, this needs to be a big center of your business. You all know that and you understand that. That's nothing new. But when we look at social media, there's two platforms I want you to focus on as you go home. That's Facebook and Twitter. But we've got to have Facebook ads attached to your Facebook strategy. And our team here will go through a lot of those examples and ideas and thoughts with you uh, later on as we move forward. It's just like any advice I've given for over 25 years. Do a couple of things really well, then go to the third one. You know, what that means is that you're spending your energy and resources on a couple of things, doing it very well, then you can go to the third media. It's like buy two TV stations or two radio stations really well before you try and go to five, six, seven, eight radio stations and then you're nothing to anybody. So these two things, we want to become something to somebody. All right? So those are the two ones we want to focus on on getting started. Now, two big pieces here. Who's going to manage your social media platform? This is important because I've seen train wrecks. All right? We want to make sure that you learn from our experiences here. If you're going to get into social media, which you better, you want to make sure if you have somebody, an employee or a freelancer, that they have social media skills. I mean, not just that they perform social media on their own, but do they have some skills, understanding of the pieces and the platforms that are out there? Do they have some savvy? Do they absolutely love it? I mean, do they live it? Are they on it at night? I mean, our social team, yeah, it's crazy. They're on it, you know, 10 o'clock at night on Saturdays helping clients because they just love it. They love to engage. They love to comment. They love to communicate. They love to post things. You got to make sure somebody loves it. Somebody that can give it some daily attention and somebody that can help get some on-site because this is real-time real, right here media, right? We need to have some engagement right on-site at your place of bowling. And, and, and this may sound funny, but make sure they like bowling. They like to have fun, you know, because it's going to help them do their job a lot better. And I also heard something earlier today in the other social media roundtable, and this is an important, I just want to bring it up again. As you set this up and work this, make sure you as the owners or operators of that business have control of your passwords. I've seen companies worth a half a billion dollars lose control of their Facebook passwords, Twitter passwords, Pinterest, their blog because somebody took them that set it up and left. You're really in a bad spot when that happens. Make sure you have control of them right now. Go home, make sure you have them and that the person that's operating it doesn't leave. And they may just forget to give them to you, but there are some people that just hold on to them and they want to ransom them back to you for whatever reason. So be, be careful when it comes to that. Now, if you're looking for some outside resources to help with this, you know, just an idea. You may end up paying somewhere between 500, depending on how big and robust you want to go, how many locations you might have, you know, up to $1,000 perhaps. Just to give you an idea, you might look for a partner in your market to help you with social media or somebody to take that on. But also, again, make sure somebody in your business is on top of this as well. So here's a couple of personal best practices I want to share with you before we get rolling. And that number one is plan ahead. You guys have a calendar, I'm sure, of events and things you have coming on in your places of business. Make sure in your social media effort that you plot those days on a calendar. You plot when you, what you're going to post, when you're going to post it, what you're going to tweet, when you're going to tweet it. And make sure it's integrated, whatever message you have on your website, on Facebook, on Twitter. We want every dollar you spend to have a dime of residual somewhere else. So plan, you got to plan ahead. It can't be, oh, should we put this on Facebook? You should have already thought about that. We want to get a photo of this event. We want to get a, you know, something of this. Plan ahead. Get a calendar. Map it out. If you end up doing blogs, you want to put blog topics you want to write about that match events or things coming on in your marketplace. So get a calendar. That's a must. Second item is make sure that your platforms sell your brand. You have consistency and continuity. There's no look that's perfect, 
But what's unperfect is when you don't have your matches, your platforms match. That's what's wrong. So make sure that you get your platforms match on your Facebook, your Twitter, things you have on your website. Continuity and consistency build two things. Trust and confidence in your brand. With that comes more customers. When you go to a McDonald's that has purple arches, you're probably a little nervous, aren't you? Right? You want confidence and trust in your brand. So wherever they connect with you, with the all your different distribution networks, it has similarity and confidence in your brand. So make sure you have that look on Twitter and Facebook that match. Link all your social links to everything. This is something that people just don't do very well. But every piece of content that you put out in the marketplace, make sure you let people know you are in those communication streams, Facebook or Twitter. So whether it's flyers, direct mail pieces, handouts, uh, you know, whatever you might do, make sure you got your social icons there to let people, one, know you have street cred, number two, maybe they'll go and find you and like you because they like your business and they want to know what specials and offers and things of that nature are coming on with your business. The next part is to make sure you link your website to other social platforms. So if you have summer leagues and you do a post or tweet or something, make sure that you link back to your YouTube channel, your website, whatever it might be. Don't forget those small things. Again, we're, we've got integration going here. We want all these platforms to cross-pollinate opportunities and communication with our customers. Make sure that you're linking, I mean this is this, uh, Twitter and Facebook. Now, we all have time and resources issues. This allows us just by linking these two that when we post something on Facebook, that message can go directly, automatically, no energy needed, straight into Twitter. So now all of a sudden you did two things on Facebook, you just did two things on Twitter and you didn't even know it. So you're, 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 you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Get your message, get your communication, they'll talk about that some more, but get that integration between those two platforms. It's not a hard thing to get set up to do. One of the other things, QR codes can sound a little scary, but this is a great way for you right at your point of contact with your consumers in your place of business to get them to like your page, your business page, so that now you can what? Distribute content to them at a later date. So all you have to do here is to set up a QR code. People come in. This is the one interesting thing about the world today. There may be people that are starving. There may be people that don't have electricity, but they all have a smartphone. I mean, it's just the flat truth. The smartphone is almost a, a common thing with everybody in the world today. So the ability as it moves forward for them to scan something at your place of business to get specials, offers through Facebook, for them to like your Facebook, you make it real easy, they scan that, it brings up the link and they can like your page right then and you've captured into your social network. Just because of the way these look, it's really scary. These, <laughs> these QR codes, they still scare me when I look at them. But you can easily just Google QR codes and they'll tell you real quickly how to set up a QR code to make that work uh, for your place of business. The last little piece here before I turn it over to the rock and roll stars and let them really drive this home is hashtags. When you tweet, when you go post something on Facebook, use hashtags as often as possible. Hashtag go bowling is something that we use with everything that we do, but hashtag your venue Hashtag bowling. Uh, think about any big event that's coming to your marketplace where people might be coming for a concert, a football game, uh, a soccer match, whatever it happens to be. Think of how you could use a hashtag so that when people come into town and they're looking for a bowling alley and they're used to using this type of technology and they, they go to Twitter and they hashtag bowling Arlington, boom, we're there because we've been hashtagging bowling Arlington. So again, part of your calendar, part of planning. Hashtags also affect your SEO, meaning what comes up when people search on Google or Bing Yahoo. It helps with SEO tremendously. And here's just a bunch of examples of some searches that were done, but you'll see a bunch of hashtags, posts, tweets, things of that nature pop up. So it's very powerful. And one thing I want to tell you, if you believe SEO is important, that when people search for different amusement opportunities in your marketplace, that your name come up on those organic searches, then you need to be in social because Google is taking the influence of social to a higher and higher degree in how they rank websites. 
They recognize that if people are talking, commenting, engaging with a business's social networks, that must mean they're relevant. And Google's in the business of providing relevant content to the end user who's doing the searches. So just tricking up your website, Google's saying that worked before, but now we want to know who really is relevant. And social media is one of the pieces they're using to really help judge that. So best practices that I want to share with you on a personal end is make sure that you have continuity in all the pieces you develop, all the graphic elements, your header in Twitter and Facebook and how it looks on your website. And if you change them out, change them all out. Integrate your messages, Twitter, Facebook, an easy connection. Post something on Facebook, it goes to Twitter. Make sure you got your social emblems platforms on your website. Make it easy for people to connect and like your pages. Put it on everything you do, showing that it's important to you. You're engaged and people can work with you in that area. Link everything you have back to your website. Or if you use videos and you have a YouTube channel, you know, link, link your website to these pieces. Our, our goal is obviously to get people to go to your website. QR codes at your counter is an easy way to grow your social networks. Doesn't take much effort doesn't take much training, you can do it very quickly and very easily. Just set it up as a process. You'll be surprised how fast you can grow, especially if you're doing things like, uh, uh, you know, the Kids Bowl Free program, you know, things of that nature. When those kids are coming in, you know, they, their parents will love to get more, more information. I mean, it's a great way to connect, make sure they like you on the social networks. Uh, and use hashtags. It's, a, it's a something that's easily forgot but it does connect with people that are engaged in this. And this isn't a silver bullet social media, but it is an important one for anybody that's in their entertainment and recreation world. And so make sure we get into that hashtag world. So those are the things that are really important to me. Now I'm going to turn it over to other people that are very important to me, and they're going to really rock you through some ideas and thoughts on social media. And so uh, with no ado, here, Claire Wheeler. Rockstar's a little strong, I might add. Um, thank you for deciding to spend part of your afternoon with us. And, and the first thing I want to share with you is that we absolutely love working with GoBowling.com. It is so much fun. And what you have to look forward to is you're going to have people because they like it. It's fun. They like to bowl. They like to get engaged. I, I, just working on the platforms is amazing because these people want to engage with you. I mean, I have fights in, with my people. Who wants to work on the air conditioning company? I mean, really? It's, it's, we have some clients that are really hard to build social media platforms for. I can tell you from experience, bowling is not one of them. We've had so much fun building the platform. We started in January. We've gained 8,000 fans since January 1st. We have t almost 28,000 now. We want to have 35 to 40,000 by the end of the year. So I can tell you firsthand that you can build fans. You can get that engagement and you, because they want to have fun with you. And I hope that we can show you some great things that you can take home with you and make that happen. The first thing is, any of you who have teenage children know what BFF means, right? Best friend forever. I'm telling you, your best friend forever is GoBowling.com. Um, I need the clicker, I guess. <laughs> And the reason I say that is because of the amount of content that we have out there, that we're putting out there every single day. I know how limited your resources are. I have a group of eight people that are digging up content and are coming up with ways to get people to engage and to get people to laugh and to get people to have fun and to get people to want to engage with bowling. You can do the same thing for your business. So you really should take advantage of us and our content. They want you to retweet. We want you to take our posts and share them. It's, it's, a, it's a way to reduce your resources. It's also a way to really make sure you're going to get some stuff out there that's going to engage people. Because I promise you, we're watching it every single day. And if we send something out that doesn't work, we don't do it again. And if we find something that does work, we do it again and again and again. So I think that what you'll find is what we've got out there is some real quality stuff. Here's some examples of a few people who have used and have reposted some of our stuff. This one in particular, you could just, just easily go and share it or you can put your own message on it. So with this one, they took our post but then said, who are our bowling divas? We know we have some for sure. So it's even better if you take ours, 
but change the status and make it personalized for you. Here's a couple more. You can see videos that have been reposted. You can see that we like to have a lot of fun um, and, and with, our, with our graphics. And again, you know, we found them for you, so you don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel every time. Ten reasons to go bowling, etc. The same thing with Twitter. You know, take advantage of us and retweet. I guess, do I need this? Oh, double mic. Um, in this case, this is not another bowling establishment. These are individuals who retweeted our stuff. But the same thing is for you. So where it says retweeted by Run Like a Girl 262, it would say retweeted by, you know, your establishment. Once again, we're tweeting a minimum of six times a day and sometimes eight or 12. So the content is there. I want to talk for just a second about your website as it relates to social media and a couple of good ideas to keep in mind to help you grow your fan base through, through your website. First of all, you want to make sure it's welcoming and user friendly, informational, you know, social links on the home page. And please don't bury them down where people are, you know, make it, make it front and center if you really want people to engage with you in social media. The ability to like or follow from the home page. You can go on and you know Facebook and Twitter have lots of plugins. The one you need to use is the one that gets you the immediate like instead of the ones that, that do other things. You want people to go on there and it says, you know, all they have to do is click and all of a sudden they like your page. Collect customer data. We're going to go back through that um, in a couple of other slides. But, you know, there's many ways with social media that can help you build your database. And database marketing, how many of you do database marketing or have a good, strong database? You know how important it can be. And we'll give you some ideas today on how you can take advantage of social media and your database and, take, and have your database take advantage of social media. I should have asked, how many of you have Facebook? So you guys are pretty engaged, right? And how about Twitter? Instagram? We're going to spend the majority of our time today talking about Facebook, because it is king. Google is the king of internet, and Facebook is the king of social media. And so we'll spend a lot of time on Facebook, some time on Twitter, and a little bit of time on the other platforms. This was, we pulled out a couple of examples. We've been out searching around at a lot of bowling establishments across the country to find good ideas. We don't know everything. And to try to give you some good examples, right? So I thought this was a great site. It's really fun. It's, bowling's fun. You know, you want to make sure that everything you're putting out there shows fun. It's also, you can see it's easy to navigate. They do great, they do make a great use of their rotators, which is really cool. They're promoting the things that are going to help them make more business, I mean, make more money for their business. But look at there, the Twitter and the Facebook are buried down in the corner. That makes me want to cry. I'm a social media person. So the only thing I would change about that website is I would make those buttons Bigger, bolder, easier to see, and I put a like button on the page. Here's another example. Again, their navigation's good. The colors are great. Um, they take advantage of um, banners really well. You can see the fa their social media links up in the corner. Uh, this one happens to have a blog. Um, again, they're promoting parties, doing all kinds of things. Um, you can consider, consider a blog, but I mentioned to you that this one has one, and I'm not sure why it's not coming up, but they do have a blog. I would say blogging is social media 2.0. I wouldn't get into blogging until you really have your Facebook nailed. But what a blog can do for you is help you put out even more relevant content, and it can seriously help your search engine optimization. So put that in the back of your mind for, for social media 2.0, that a blog is something to consider. Collect customer data. Use BPAA resources or third-party forms on your website to collect that customer data. When you build a strong database, start marketing to them. So eBlast, special offers. If you're sending out uh, eBlast, which some of you are doing from database marketing, put all your social links in there for sure. Encourage them to follow you or fan you, and then give them a reason to do it. Say, we're going to give you know 10 free games to you know, whoever likes our page 
from, that's on our database in the next week or whatever. You can build the parameters. It's just giving them a reason to really do it. If you do a newsletter, do the same thing. Um, we're not going to get into this today, but Facebook, it's just amazing. It changes every day and what it's got available for you to help really reach your consumers. We're going to take you through how to build a Facebook ad today. How many are using Facebook ads? So those of you that are using them, you know they're critical to building your platform. And we want everybody, if you do nothing else but walk away today and say, you know what, I'm going to add Facebook ads to my program. But they are to the point where they have something called Facebook custom audience ads, which means we, you could take your Excel spreadsheet and plug it into a plugin with Facebook, and they can match up the people who are on Facebook with your database. So you send out an e-blast to them, and the next day you can serve up an ad from Facebook that's saying the same thing. It's building frequency with, with an integration between the different mediums. Um, fan generation, here's another one. I haven't ever seen anybody do it. I'd love it if somebody did. If you're using rotators on your website, why not have one of them be that great big click here and like us right now? I mean, that's pretty front and center, right? Um, so we'll talk about the basics of Facebook. Uh, you probably all know this, but it's really important that you have a business page and not a personal page. Sometimes when people first get started, they start with a personal page and have it act like a business page. If it has this right here, it's not a business page, it's a personal page. Okay? That's not what you want. Number one, Facebook will shut you down. They're kind of mean about that. And it, there's also a lot of other things that you know, you can't do with a personal profile like you can with a business profile. Ron talked about branding. Again, make sure that your sites are well branded and that you can tell it's the same company when you go from platform to platform. Tabs. Um, Facebook is always changing. Everybody knows that, right? They're also a ghost. Has anybody ever tried to get an answer from Facebook? They don't. And if they do, it's so far later that you're so mad you don't even care, right? They, they, they are not very helpful, okay? So you need to keep up. You need to make sure you've got somebody, whoever's doing it for you, whatever local company you may hire, that they're keeping up with the trends because Facebook's not going to let you know. They're just going to change the format of your page one day. It's going on across the country night right now. How many of you have, all of a sudden you have a new format for your Facebook page, right? Did anybody warn you the new format was coming? If you're reading about social media, you would have known that. I'm sure you don't have time to do that. So you have to keep up with it. These, as you know, for anybody whose format's been changed, you know these are the old tabs. But, I, but I, the point I want to make is how important what is on your tabs are. Join our email. That's a great tab. Connect with us, that's a great tab. That's special offers. Events, of course, photos. In this one, it's kids ball free, photos, events, reviews. Okay, people put reviews on your Facebook page, right? How much do we hate it when they put a bad review? Because we can't take it down. So, you know, there's tricks of the trade that you guys understand. There's people who love you. For every person that puts something bad on your review, there's probably 10 that love your establishment. So take advantage of those. If they had a great experience, if they had fun at your, at your entertainment center, then say, hey, would you put a nice review on Google? I'd really appreciate that. Or on our Facebook page. Because if nothing else, A, it's going to make that 4.2 rating or a 5 rating, 5 star. But also, if there happens to be a bad review, it's going to get pushed down. Um, always reply and engage. If they're talking to you, they want you to talk back. So if they ask a question or make a comment on something that you've posted, remember social media is supposed to be building relationships. So it's a back and forth conversation. So for example, in this one, this is a post from GoBowling.com, and it says, um, this is cool, oh, did I say that, lol, love it. And we replied back, we do too, with a smiley face. It doesn't have to be a big old huge response. It just has to say, thank you, what, you know, Thanks for, thanks for communicating with us. Post every day. Use a plan and post in advance. You can pre-plan posts. This is a site I saw that's, um, that was a Facebook that was posting every single day. What you don't want to do is post every third day. Post, you know, people get, get, get engaged or they set up a Facebook page and before you know it, you know, somebody's really into it and then I'm, 
All of a sudden you looked at it and there hasn't been a post since December 2012. You know, what do you think happens when somebody goes to that Facebook page, right? So you want to stay really, really active with your Facebook and post daily. How many of you know you can post your in advance? I mean, it is a tool that can help you save a lot of time. So, for example, with GoBowling.com, we'll, and all of our clients, we sit down, we make a calendar for the month. What are the big events? What are the contests we're doing? What, what do we need to get out with? And we'll have spots for just pure engagement, knowing we're going to put a fun post every day. Or we're going to do, a, we're going to, we do Tuesday trivia. We're, that's going to be every Tuesday, it's Tuesday trivia. Every Wednesday, there's an answer to it. Every Thursday's Throwback Thursday. So you could do that too. Think of them, write them down. Trivia Tuesday, Answer Wednesday, Throwback Thursday. It gives you a way to kind of, so you're not having to sit there thinking, you know, what am I going to write about, right? Um, it'll help you. And then if you can post as much as you can in advance, then the job doesn't become so overwhelming on a daily basis. Here's, for those of you who might not know, when you go in and put a status in, there's a little clock down there. And if you click the clock, it lets you program it. So you can say, okay, you know, we're having a special anniversary on Saturday, June 28th. So you might go in there and for the, you know, the 26th, 27th, and 28th, you're going to pre-post a time of day and when you want that post to run. And, it's, and you know it's done then. You don't have to worry about it. The other thing is Facebook analytics. Please pay attention to the insights on your analytics. They can give you some very valuable information. If you look at the insights, you can find when your people are really looking at your Facebook page. It, it shows on a graph. It might show it going way up at 4 p.m. Guess what time you want to post? 4 p.m. So look at those analytics and learn from them because you've got to do all of these tricks to make sure you get the highest reach you can. Because everybody knows now that's involved in it, Facebook doesn't reach your whole audience anymore. You need to do things like watch your analytics, like Facebook ads, like promoted posts, to, to increase that reach of the fans that you do have. Be timely, you know. So if you have your basic plan, even posted in advance, then you can go in and be timely. You know, if it's raining outside. Hey, it's raining outside, come on, great day to come bowling, right? I'm talking about World Cup right now. Everybody's into it. So if you hashtag World Cup, you know, you're, you're, you're a trending, you're in with the gang, you're in with what everybody else is doing. So it's important that you also put some timely posts on top of whatever you plan in advance. Create engagement. You know, people love to laugh. We have found some of the funniest bowling content. And it's, I mean, look how, this is what I mean about engagement. 175 people like that post, 47 shares. So you know what happens when they share. If everybody, if you assume that everybody has 200 friends and they've shared with 200 friends who might share with another 200 friends and, and on and on and on it goes. It doesn't always have to be bowling related. I would say the majority probably should be. But if something funny happens in com your community, if you happen to see something that made you laugh, in this case it's, they think this guy will take up two spaces again, right? 40 likes, 12 share comments, one share. You know, it's all about that engagement. Ask questions. Nicole and I are forever amazed at our Tuesday trivia. I mean, we will get 180, 200 people on Tuesday come in and put comments in to try to answer the trivia question. It's amazing. They are really into it. This one was, what's your surefire method for a strike? Tell us in the comments. Boom. Look at all those comments. Plus all the likes, plus all the, so questions are big. You don't want to just talk to them, you want to engage them, okay? Is this, all, is this making sense? Um, okay, create fun. This was one we found in somebody's site. Angie dressed up for a Saturday morning league. That's, that's pretty darn funny. That's something from their own site, from their establishment. So it can be stuff like that. It can be, you know, all kinds of, it can be bowling jokes. It can be whatever you do to get people engaged. Comment, like, and share. And the, the, the way they're going to do that, the easiest is if you make them laugh. Special offers, obviously. You need to keep special offers going up. 
They, they will use them, they will take advantage of them. So I, I would definitely consider, you know, taking advantage of, of making, and then when you have to plan in advance, it makes you think about what, you know, what special offers are we gonna do this month? And then you kind of build it into all of your stuff. Get your employees involved. Get them to like the page. Get them to share the content. You know, if you do a, do a, a prize contest, for the fan, for the employee that gets you the most new fans, you know, give them a gift card or something. The next time you have a company meeting, say, hey, guess what? This company meeting, you can bring your smartphone. And say, okay, before we start the meeting, how many of you like our page? You do, okay, if you don't, right now, before we go on with the meeting, go to www.facebook.com and like our page. And then remind them to get out there and share your content with their friends. Because it'll help you. It's a, it's a free way to get you, to help you build fans. Uh, so, the basics. Branded, tabs, post every day, always reply, be timely, en engagement, ask questions, have fun, special offers. Okay, I think I've cleared everything. Get your employees involved. So, this is an example of, do any of you know Brian Weatherford? Probably some of you do. Anyway, he's got a bowling center near us in Arlington, so we take advantage of him all the time. And um, he's been a, a great help to us. Anyway, this is his platform. But you can see he's got a good, engaging uh, Facebook page. He's asking questions. He's being timely, saying, daily cold outside, widely scattered fun inside. He's got specials going all the time. So he's doing everything that I'm talking about. Here's another one that what we thought was a, a really good looking Facebook page. It's just dynamic with all the colors, etc. They also did a similar thing. They do specials, they ask questions. They were doing a, a lot of things right. Tagging, how many of you use tags in your Facebook? Here's, here's the thing with, with, with tagging. If it's a personal person, if it's a personal person, if it's a person and they comment on your page, you can reply back, okay? But if it's a business, you can actually send a message. So let's say that you decide what, you know, I want to reach all the high school students. I want to reach, you know, the community and get them involved. So go in and make sure you like all the high school's pages, the orchestra, the soccer team, you know, whatever pages they have. Make sure you like all the junior high pages. Make sure you like the YMCA. Make sure you love the like, like the charitable organizations. If there's a community site in your town that posts about events and what's happening in your town, like it. Make sure that you like them because then you could send message out, let schools out. Do you go to hashtag Arlington High School or hashtag Bailey Junior High? Don't miss teen night tonight. Get two free game coupons, okay? That shows up on the Facebook page of those establishments. It's another one of those little tricks that can help you get the message out and help you, hopefully they're gonna like you back. Looking for something fun to do? Hashtag go belong, belong to, if you belong to the Arlington YMCA, get 10% off, okay? That's gonna go on the YMCA page. Always respond back, again, this, let's assume Nicole said something nice on the site. Thanks, at Nicole Bennett, glad you, glad you had a good time. It shows up in her Facebook feed. So all of her friends see it, right? So at signs are cool, good thing to do. Don't just invite people to share your website. I mean, it's a nice thing if they do, but they probably won't. It's more important that you get people to like your page from your website, from your Facebook, whatever. Go to www.developers.com. No, developers.facebook.com. It's a, it's a world of resources. See right there? Like button. So if you just remember that website and, and write it down, because it can help you. you. You can go to Facebook and it can, it can teach you how to go to different places and things to do. So you just hit that like button and it's going to give you a code and it's going to tell you how to get that like button on your website. Uh, build albums for special events. Having a Halloween party, build a photo album, right? Okay, then you put the photo album up on the page and say, wow, we had the, the greatest Halloween party. We took a bunch of photos. If you were at a party, look for yourself. 
Oh, you think they're not going to? Of course they are. So they go into the album, then they're going to find themselves, and then you say, and tag and share with your friends. And they do. You know how much 18 to 28, 30 year olds love to share pictures with all of their friends. So they're going to go in there and they're going to send that out to all of their friends. It's another way that is increasing the engagement and the reach. Go local. Congratulations, Jimmy. Uh, you know, Congratulations, Manolo. Look at the likes on these, 13, 42. I can't remember what the other one was, but it was big. This one, congratulations to whoever did a 300 game today. 38 likes, six comments, one share. So, you know, people like to hear about people that they know and in the community. And it, and it shows that you care and you like your customers and you're happy for them when they have a great success. Support local charities. I'm sure all of you, there's at least one charity you probably support. Make it a social media event. Get social media involved in it. You could do a dollar per fan to a certain charity and say for a given period of time, we're going to donate a dollar to the Humane Society for every new fan. Get the Humane Society to link up with you. They're posting it, you're posting it, it works. Events, holding events that you, and get your social media involved in it. There's all kinds. Here's one that, you know, was, um, it, look at, but see, I'm talking about the engagement down here again. That was one, Strikes for Strays, um, Diabetes, you know, um, breast, breast cancer, there's, there's a zillion. It's just that you, you, if, you're, you, if you're involved already, then make it a social media event in some way. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Nicole, and she's going to take you on a little visit to GoBowling.com and show, show you a couple things on her site. Is there anybody who has been on our site? Thank you. <laughs> if you do me a favor before the, the, this session's over, like it, okay? <laughs> Go like the page. We'd really appreciate it. So we're going to brag for a second about GoBowling.com's Facebook. We're really proud of it. We work hard on it. So we're going to go live to the actual page um, and look through, you know, we practice what we preach. We have, I think, great branding, different things like that. Um, what was it coming? That we want to show you so that you can use it and share it with your audience as well. So we have a contest going on right now, strike a selfie, you can win a $1,000. Uh, if you upload a selfie to our Facebook page. So um, we have that cover photo, the big photo on a lot of our platforms to promote that. Uh, you can see our logo here, our profile photo is the same on every platform. We have, we've actually switched over to the new, the new page. So if you haven't yet, here's kind of what you're going to see in the next few weeks or so. Uh, it's the same content, it's just different aesthetically. So uh, rather than having the, all the tabs across the top, they're going to switch you know, down here, uh, still with the same photo and things like that that we've incorporated. Um, this is the Trivia Tuesday that Claire referenced. Uh, we do hashtag that so people looking for trivia things can, can find it easier. Um, every week, we love all the comments that come through for it. Uh, we switch it up, you know, it gets harder and harder because we have some hardcore bowling fans on here. Every week we get, you know, a million shares, tons of comments. It's really great. So, I think, what is that number there? We've already had... 59? Oh, two. Sorry. We've had 99 people comment on that post. That's what I'm saying. If you don't do anything else, use Tuesday Trivia. <laughs> And all you have to do when you come on our page is just click share. It goes straight to your page. You can add a custom message if you want to add something to it or just share it. It goes to your audience and they can interact on your page from our content. So it really is that simple. Just be sure to share it on Wednesday as well so they have the answer. They're not left hanging. Um, we have tons of content every day. Uh, we usually post two to three times a day. It's always, you know, fun. Uh, light content. Usually we try to keep it timely as well. Uh, national news was that Lady Gaga went bowling. So we tagged her page here, hashtag go bowling, and shared the link. We do things like that quite often. Again, you can come and share the same thing. If you see something that you think is cool, just share it with your audience and it takes, you know, takes out the guesswork for you. Just share our stuff. It always does well, I promise. 
One other thing, uh, we'd really appreciate a favor if you would share that selfie contest. Okay, we've got almost 500 entries. We're shooting for a thousand. So if you all shared it, you'd probably help us hit our numbers. We'd really appreciate it. <laughs> and you might win. <laughs> oh yeah, That's and the you real could thing. win. <laughs> for Facebook ads, uh, we would encourage you to start with like ads. There's a, a few different types you can do. Website clicks, different engagement for posts. To build your fan base, especially if you're just starting out, we would recommend uh, starting off with like ads to get your fan base built up. Um, we talked about in the earlier session this morning about some people who had had experiences in you know, fans being bought for them and things like that. Facebook ads is a surefire way to find fans in your area with interests that align with your demographic who would come to your center. We recommend a 25 mile radius using uh, different profiles like this. You can see here's a screenshot. I'm going to take you live in a second too to walk you through it. But um, again, this is one thing that we really recommend that you incorporate into your program, whether it's you know, just at the beginning or even if you have a, a decent fan base. I think it's something that's very important. Uh, you can target by age, language, you know, um, area, obviously, uh, interest, all these things to make sure that you're reaching the people who are your customers or potential customer base. This is the, what we use for Go Bowling. Uh, they are national, so we don't limit it to an area uh, specifically, but we do limit it to interest and age group. Uh, people who are going to go bowling. You can see different interests that we've targeted, gaming, uh, NASCAR from when we had our big you know, promotion for the race and things like that. So people that are in your demographic who you want to target. So we're going to go live to look at building an ad and I'll show you really how simple it is. So if you go to ads.facebook.com, um, you'll see the screen like this. Again, we'll go for page likes to build your audience initially. And these are all the different types, you know, once you kind of get your bearings and get built up to it, uh, you can do page posts and clicks to website if you have a promotion on your website. But we're going to start with page likes. So we'll select for Go Bowling. Now you can choose up to six different images to promote your ad with. Um, Facebook will kick it out if it's over 20% in text. So keep it just very, you know, aesthetically appealing, but limit the text in the graphic. So you can upload those images here, edit your text here. So we'll do something like, you know, um, schools out, let's go bowling. You'll immediately see a preview of how the ad is going to look right here. So uh, it will show up for you know all of the interests that you've targeted, and then also friends of friends who like the page. So if I'm friends with Ron Wheeler, it's going to say Ron likes this. Why don't you? You'll see the exact text that you just put in. Uh, the graphics will change up with the same text throughout the campaign, and they'll have an option just to like the page directly from that ad. Here's where you can uh, narrow down your audience. Facebook is really great with their analytics. They'll show you exactly how big your audience is here once you start defining it with different interests, obviously bowling. No matches found, that's interesting. Um, gaming, things like that, you can do different things. And you can create lists that are uh, you can store. So every month when you're doing your campaigns, um, you can sort, you can save that. So you can have the same uh, interest or change it up for different promotions. You can do it by age. 13 is the youngest for a Facebook ad target. Uh, languages, interests, behaviors, all different types of things. Also, when you get further into the ads, you can also target with your email database in addition to all of this. You can really get that specific audience of people who are likely to come to your center. Uh, we'd recommend a budget of uh, at least $25 to start off with, if not more. You know, you can move it up as you go. Um, and Facebook will spend it out throughout the 
length of the campaign. So if you want to do a month, it'll spin that throughout the course of the month and make sure that ad is showing up and that you're getting the clicks that you need. Again, this is a, uh, an example of how the ad shows up. So, uh, you know, friends of friends, interests, you're all going to be targeted. Keep it very visual and aesthetically appealing. So they're going to see that. It's going to be kind of a break in the timeline. It'll be interesting and they'll like your page. <coughs> so this is uh, an example of at the end of the campaign, like I said, the analytics will show the total actions that your ad received, how many page likes, how many post likes that the actual post got, the content itself, um, photo views, everything like that. So you can see exactly how well that ad did. And if you maybe need to switch up your graphics next month, I've played around with the interest for Go Bowling for months to kind of really target what I think does the best. So you can play around with that month to month and see, okay, who am I really targeting? Who's responding to this? Who's not? Um, and it's, it's really cool to see. And Claire is going to have some Facebook good ideas for us. Um, I, I went around and looked at some of the things that I saw out there that were new or different and kind of wanted to collect them and just give you an idea. Um, I would, you know, Facebook good ideas, I would offer special uh, offers to Facebook fans only. Okay, it's more reason to become a Facebook fan. So you could put this on your website, you could put this in a newsletter, you could put it in a, a database email, uh, you can put it in collateral, it's, you know, whatever. Put a, put a, you know, create collateral with a QR code that says, you know, like us on Facebook because you get a free drink every visit if you're a Facebook fan or whatever the case may be. Um, email database entry, we talked about that. Here's one, a site I found that I thought, oops, this thing's really sensitive, I'm sorry. Um, right here it says, sign up and receive a special, special offers about Thunderbird Lanes, plus you get a $10 credit for open play um, on your next visit. So again, they're giving people an encouragement to join them on their database, but they've got it on their Facebook page. So I think, again, it's like that cross-promoting and taking advantage of every avenue to build your fans, to build your database, etc. cetera. Uh, Instagram, if, you have, if you're using Instagram, make sure you have a feed on Facebook so the photos get naturally posted. Uh, post videos, they work well too. Um, it kind of breaks things up a little bit. If you've got some good videos, you can post. Uh, change your Facebook and Twitter covers on occasion. You know, go seasonal. Um, go special events or contests. So, for example, the Foxfire Lanes Bowling, um, Beat the Heat, join the Foxfire Summer League. So they changed it according to that. You know, we'll change Go Bowling's site all the time to uh, if we're having a special contest or whatever, but we still make sure that our major branding cues are in there. So you don't want to stray too far from your brand, but you do want to try to change it up sometimes. Uh, engage uh, fan of the week. I thought this was a great idea. You know, you could just come up to somebody that's really having fun. You know, you can find those people that you know, that they're an influencer, that they, they're, you know, they're having a great time. They're going to tell their friends about it and say, hey, are you, are you a Facebook fan? And if they say yes, awesome. If they say no, say, well, would you please like our page because I want to make you our fan of the week. Okay? And you post this on Facebook. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to send it to all their friends. Yay, I'm the fan of the week. So now, whatever their friend base is, has now seen that they're doing that, and hopefully they're going to like your page. So I thought that was just an awesome idea. Um, so we'll talk a minute for about, about Twitter. Obviously, this is not good. Um, You've got to make sure your links are working, and, don't, and you don't have any social media skeletons out there. So this was actually a, a, from a website click, and it went there and says, sorry, that page doesn't exist. That is really bad social media etiquette. <laughs> So you want to make sure you, that that doesn't happen. This is better. Um, both of these clicked from websites. The only thing is, this is the default profile background, which is okay, but this is better. Again, you can brand it instead of just having that default background on Twitter. Um, was this where we were going to go live? I think so.
We're going live. <laughs> so we love our buddy Brian at Alley Cats. He does a great job on his social program. So we're going to go to uh, Twitter and uh, also show you how to share our content from there. Uh, it looks like a lot of you didn't really have Twitter happening, so there's no excuse now with our content. You can just retweet it. I'm going to show you how so that you can have an active uh, page. So here again is the Alley Cats page. We think it's just a great example of you know how yours should look. Uh, Twitter actually changed recently, so if you had it before, maybe you haven't kept it up. This is how it's going to look now. It has the larger uh, cover photo or profile photo at the top. Um, again, he has the same you know branding all across everything that he does. The Alley Cats, you know, logos on the wall. We love that. So if you go to uh, Twitter.com/slash/GoBowling.com. Here's where you'll, you'll find all of our stuff. Um, we tweet at least six times a day. So it's so simple. All you have to do is come here, hit that retweet button. If you're logged into your you know, Twitter page, obviously, retweet that. That's literally it. And it's going to show up on your page. The same as if you tweeted something, you know, originally from you. That's going to go to all of uh, Alley Cat's followers here. And they can engage with that tweet just as if you had sent it yourself. So again, you know, use our content, use our resources, use our ideas, even if you want to just, you know, revise it and use it on your own page. It's there for you guys to use. So um, the basics of Twitter, tweet every day, tweet many times a day. It's a very fluid, fast-moving medium, as you know. Also, Twitter, you can also pre-tweet, you know, pre I guess you'd call it, where you can load up. Again, go back to that plan and make sure if you're doing something special that you've got a Twitter Twitter play on going on how many tweets on that messaging for several days before that event and then so that you know you know you're going to have some tweets every day and then go in and do maybe two new tweets that day that are more timely or you know congratulating somebody for bowling a 300 or whatever at least then you know you've always got a base of tweets going out there the other one is as Ron mentioned linking your Facebook to Twitter then you know for sure that you've got tweets going you're never going to have a day where there's not a tweet out there, as long as you don't have a day where you're not posting on Facebook. Um, tweet uh, what's happening in your business, your community, the world, the U.S., you know, relevant and timely. Use photos and videos. This is another thing that uh, um, I thought we had a, there's a place on Twitter where when you go there, it will ask you photo or video. So you don't have to just have it be text. And I would really suggest using photos or videos sometimes because it kind of stops the, the breakup. You know, for those of you who are on Twitter, it's text, text. It's just all these reams and reams of text. And all of a sudden, if you see a photo, it kind of stops you. Ask questions. Again, just the same as Facebook. It's important to ask questions. That's how you're going to get the engagement. The hashtags on Twitter are even probably more important because everybody's using hashtags on Twitter. And so anything that's got the word bowling in it needs to be hashtagged. Anything that's got your venue in it needs a hashtag. So when people come in, like Nicole said, showed you, and they come into your town, or even if they're, um, you know, wanting to do a bowl, you know, bowling fun, what's fun this weekend bowling, or what's happening in Dallas bowling, okay? Your, your hashtag bowling could come up, and it could be your special offer to come in. So you want to make sure that you're, you're doing that on all of your Twitter. And hashtags do affect organic ranking. Now, Ron mentioned that, and this is some time back, but you know, because we hashtag Go Bowling all the time, uh, we went in and did an organic search for Go Bowling, and our Facebook page came up number one, and Twitter came up number two. Woohoo! You know, we were doing the happy dance. I did it today, the website came up number one, which is really the way it should be. <laughs> and then below the website was Facebook and Twitter, so it does make a difference. Um, so you want to be branded, linked to Facebook, tweet often and every day, events, specials, news, fun, community, retweet, go bowling, your, your BFF, uh, use your monthly plan to reduce your daily work, and 
use photos and videos. So this is what I was talking about here. When you go in to compose a tweet, there's a place right there that you can add a photo, upload it from your computer, boom, you have more than just the regular 140 character tweet. You've got a really cool photo that goes along with it. So um, we're almost coming to the close. We want to talk just a few minutes about these four platforms. Um, Google Plus, I would, if you don't have a Google Plus page, you really need to do it. If for no other reason other than the search engine optimization. It's a Google property. They're not going to like you if you don't have one. So it's, it's going to help your website. If you never even put a single post on Google Plus, it's going to help your website simply to have that page with your information on it. And I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to kind of finish up with Instagram and Foursquare. Foursquare. And then we'll wrap up and have time for questions. For Instagram, uh, this is really the top way right now to reach the younger audience, that middle school to high school audience. This is kind of where they're, they're heading. The Instagram, Snapchat, Vine, uh, their parents aren't on it. It's younger. It's quick. It matches their attention span anymore. It's the, the way to reach that audience right now. It's very um, all about fun. Um, it's a great way to brand your center and instantly, you know, salute the big winner. Somebody scored a 300 tonight. I'm going to put that on Instagram, hashtag it, uh, you know, bowl, go bowling, high score, whatever it might be, hashtag your bowling center, your venue. Um, it's a great way to reach, especially that audience. Having a party, instant photos. Community personalities, I know I've seen in a lot of centers, you'll have people from news networks, you know, retired athletes, whatever, come through. Very cool opportunity. Um, that's a huge audience, you know, on Instagram to reach. So put it on there. Um, you can also link this, like we talked about Facebook to Twitter, link this to your other platforms, you know, once you get there. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, whatever, that's an additional post that you don't even have to think about. You just link it and it's on there uh, and it's all integrated for you. Uh, here's some good examples that show, uh, here you can see it's, uh, they've tagged the location. So they're tagging, you know, your center and these photos already. Might as well tap into that and add to it. Um, he's also hashtagged this photo uh, to make it easier to find on Instagram. Hashtag bowling, celebration, football. Anybody looking at those categories is going to see this photo. This is a really cute one. She did not location tag it, but she did hashtag it. So bowling, you know, we do that for uh, gobowling.com's Instagram account. Everything is hashtag gobowling, hashtag bowling. You can go on and just click that hashtag, see who's bowling, see who's talking about bowling in your area, like their photos, you know, gain followers that way. Uh, Foursquare, these accounts exist for you, really whether you know it or not or whether you've claimed it or not. People uh, are, are checking in and using this, uh, so you might as well tap into this as well. Uh, Instagram and Foursquare are things, you know, I wouldn't stress out about it right now. You build up that momentum to get to this, but just to kind of be thinking about this, uh, you definitely need to claim this for your business. This is an example of a bowling center that um, has, has not been claimed, but people have checked in, uploaded photos, written notes and reviews on it. So to tap into that would be just a huge resource for you in your center. You can see how many check-ins, how many people have left tips, all these things, it's already there. They probably have no idea. So to go on there, all you have to do is claim it. You might have to uh, verify your business that you are the owner. Um, and you can do some great things with it. So it just allows people to check into your center. Uh, most people do have it linked to their, or their uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else, so that all their friends are going to see that. The reach can be really huge. Um, it allows you to be the chosen business. This is an example that I did last night on my Foursquare account. I'm from Texas. I want to go bowling. I'm in Orlando. Okay, let's, let's search on Foursquare and see who is doing what. It looks like some of my friends have been to these two, uh, top two centers here. It shows the distance. It's location-based. And then um, the other 
greatest part to me about Foursquare is adding specials. So you can, if you take ownership and you claim your Foursquare account, you can add a special, 10% off, uh, you know, free shoe rental with check-in, whatever it might be. And if I'm searching for a bowling center or restaurant or whatever, and I'm looking, you know, what's in my area, what's around, and I see that your center has a special, who am I going to choose to go to that night, right? I want those free shoes or whatever it is. So um, I think that's really the power in that. It allows the consumer to choose you um, and then you to offer something immediately to them, gain a new customer. Um, talked about link we'll talk about LinkedIn for just uh, one second and wrap up. LinkedIn is primarily important because of the business community. And if you're trying to get businesses to book parties at your establishment, then LinkedIn is a great way to make those connections. An owner or manager should develop a business profile page. You can do it through your personal page as well, but having a business profile is good. Invite community businesses and to follow you and build a good community LinkedIn base. Um, and from there, you know, it's important for obtaining business related bookings. You can actually message on individual business owners with special offers. Have you thought about where you're having your Christmas party yet? We're, we've got special offerings for local businesses. Or it could be a summer event, or it could be anything like that. You know, because businesses are always, you know, uh, and what do you call those, like team building. Do you want an idea for a great team building event? How about, how about bringing your people here to, to go bowling and have a competition or whatever the case may be? So you can use LinkedIn. It's a great source to connect with businesses to get you some of those, those bigger party bookings. So to wrap up, um, then, we'll get to so, then we'll get to questions. Social media is a must. You really can't not be in it. Um, social media can be overwhelming. Um, Choose one to two or two platforms and get really good at them and then add other platforms. So add as many platforms as your resources can handle because you're better off to do Facebook and do it really good than you are to do three or four platforms and do them okay. Um, because it can be overwhelming, you know, I, I think it's if you have an employee that loves it that can really take the time to do it, it's great. I've had people who have hired interns and things of that nature, but then when the intern's done, where do you, where do you go? So, you know, as much as it seems like, um, you know, paying a company to help you, in the long run, when you think about the reach and the impressions and the engagement and the people that you're reaching on social media that's free, with the exception of paying for Facebook ads, it's it's, I would, I would, if I were you, and I, I would rather pay a social media company to help me do it right than, than a yellow page ad any day, any time. And, I, you know, in the, in the podium this morning or the earlier, the uh, proprietors that are really into Facebook, one of them, she said, you know, if I were you, I'd just get out of yellow pages right now. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, I would take every dollar you might be sinking into the yellow pages and put it into social media. And if that means it's going to help you hire somebody, even just part-time to help you do it right, I think it's, I think it's worthy of it. Um, get help from a social media enthusiast. I just talked to you about that. And remember, GoBowling.com is your BFF. Um, and, you know, at any time, and we'll, you know, we can give you our cards or whatever. We don't mind. Call us. If you get stumped on something, we, don't, we would love to talk to you. Just call us and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to do this, but I can't figure out how to make it work. So, you know, we're, we are a resource for you to give, to give you some advice or to try to help you through a stumbling block or something. We would have no problem whatsoever. So, um, with that, we'll open it up to questions. Well, for the first question for GoBowling.com, it is basically designed to keep people engaged in the bowling industry and to reach those people that, you know, it's, it's not, it's league people, but it's like if through social media and GoBowling.com can get the person who bowls twice a year to bowl four times a year or six times a year because we're in their face, that's, that's what GoBowling.com is designed to do, is to build that audience, to get people engaged, to remind them about how fun bowling is, so that they go to your establishments more. So that's, that's really the lifeblood of GoBowling.com, 
If Heath, would you like to add to that in any way? Oh, th his question was, what is the reason for GoBowling.com? And then, you know, with, with the whole uh, social media thing that we have going on now with, uh, with Wheeler doing all this great stuff, I mean, it just makes it so good. I mean, even just, you know, re-sharing, re, uh, retweeting the, the information just to keep, you know, it's a great resource just for your, your center itself to keep your, your social media efforts in, uh, going. But it's, it's really just basically um, a, a vehicle to get people to go bowling more often. And, and you partially answered, if I understood your first or your second question was, how much should you anticipate paying? You know, I, I wish I could give you a, a good answer on the percentage of budget. I, I don't know that I have a, an answer for that, but I, I would be somewhat cautious because if somebody comes to you and says 3000 it's too big. You don't need to spend $3,000 to have somebody manage your, your social media program. And you were right when you said it depends on how many platforms you are and how, how uh, active you want to be. But, you know, you can always get somebody to do part of it and you can do part of it. Or they can get you set up and get you going. But, you know, I, I, usually it's somewhere between $500 to $1,000. And if you're really just doing Facebook and Twitter, you know, I say the 500 number is probably a good barometer. But if somebody comes in and says, you know, yeah, sure, we'll do it for you for two grand a month or three grand a month, I just, unless you have multiple centers, okay, that could be different, then, then you're just, you know, I'd talk to somebody else. Did I answer your question? Uh, I, my name's Casey. I'm from Cypress Lanes in Winter Haven, Florida. I do 90% of the posting on my page and there's days when I feel creative and I'm inspired and the bowling center is slow enough that I can post two or three times a day. I always find that the engagement on the page is reflective to the kind of mood I'm in and it shows in the post somehow and people are more engaged when I'm inspired and creative. Well, you know, there's days I have no, I, I don't feel creative at all, you know, or I'm out of town, I'm in Orlando. And I look for inspiration. And what I do now is I've liked about a thousand different business pages, beer companies, liquor companies, other bowling centers. You guys, I draw from a lot. You know, but it, tips from you guys on those days where I'm not feeling creative, um, what are some things that you guys do when you're on a deadline and you're feeling pressure to come up with creative things and you just are not feeling it? The, the same thing that you do, really. I really look oh, come to come on, you know it's tequila. <laughs> Lots of liquor, totally joking, halfway. <laughs> but um, so I look at other pages, I look at timely events, that's really helpful, you know, just what's in the news, what can I make that, can I twist that, can I make that relevant to bowling, can I ask just a question. You know, we have done just straight text posts in the past that actually get a lot of engagement. What are you doing this weekend? What do you think of this? Isn't this article funny? Just different things like that in the news, different pages, um, the same thing that you're doing really. I think it's just kind of having those resources and looking um, at different like meme websites and funny things for bowling. Those are really helpful. And I, I'd about looking at I'd, what's trending? I'm sorry, Ron. Oh, I was going to say, I would suggest as you're in those creative states, you may come up with a few ideas that you can kind of call evergreen posts that you can just set over here that you think are really good. And you, you might have 15 or 12, you know, 20 or something at some point over there. When you're not feeling good, you go there and look and grab one. And so, you know, just build, build a little, build a little uh, inventory of some. That, that's that's a good. And we step don't we well. don't do it very often, but we we have had a couple posts that have gone ridiculously viral. So you know we'll set those aside and maybe three months later post it again, because remembering we're probably not hitting the same people anyway. So it's like if it works once, it can work again. <laughs> The question was, do you financially promote every post? We pick certain ones. If it's for a promotion, we, we're heavily promoting the Strike a Selfie promotion, for example. If a post is done particularly well, we'll promote it you know, to get more engagement. It obviously has you know, struck a nerve with, with people. Um, so we'll just do individual posts. And then we have our solid uh, budget that goes for likes that just spins throughout the month. Yeah, they definitely will. That's how Facebook operates. You know, they, that's why we really do recommend the Facebook ads. It's just, it, that's the way they do it these days. They want you to spend a little bit of money, even if it's 25, 50 bucks a month, it's gonna increase that, you know, that engagement and people seeing it in their feeds. Another question back here. I have two questions. Um, one, is there any kind of privacy laws? Like if I were to take pictures and videos of my customers, do, do I have to get any kind of consent? 
to post it on social media? It wouldn't hurt. What? It, I, it wouldn't hurt. I, you know, I, just to make sure they know, you can do a, a real, just do a real simple little write-up that said, that's basically saying, I give the rights to my photograph to be used on social media by so-and-so company, and if you get a couple really good shots or, you know, then you can say, would you mind if we used you? Because like birthday parties and things like that are kind of hard sometimes because, you know, you can't really get releases from all the kids. Because, like, if I want to post someone like, congratulations, so-and-so on a 300, you'd still recommend getting some kind of consent? Or if I want to, say, if I want to like your page, do, can I do it on my, my business page or do I have to do it through my personal page? You can do both. Mm -hmm. You can definitely do both. You can go on, you know, log in as your page and like it and then as your personal page as well. The question was, is there a big difference between promoted posts or Facebook ads? Which would, which would you use more often? I think it depends on which goal you're going for. You know, like for example, with the, the monthly budget like we did for likes or if you have a promotion on your website or a page that you want to send people to, clicks to the website. It's just different goals. If you're promoting, if you just saw a post that did really well and you want to put 10 bucks on it to, you know, amp it up, that's kind of a separate goal. So I think it just depends on what you're seeing and who your audience is. Does that make sense? Okay. It's like the like, you know, if, you're, if your goal is, I want to really increase fans, it's like it. Not that the promoted post won't do it. If you want to increase your engagement, it's more, you would lean more towards a promoted post. Okay, another question? Yeah, I've got a comment and, uh, and one question. Um, my name is Rob. I'm from Quad City Family Entertainment in Moline. Um, my, my comment is, uh, it, um, someone asked about posting on their page. I did that while, while you were doing your presentation and shared it on our page and we've already got six people have, have de guessed a Tuesday trivia on our page in like 15 minutes. So cool. It's, it's kind of neat. You know, I got a like and you know, a couple people shared it so it's pretty neat. I mean, it is, it is quick. Um, I do most of ours as well, posting. Um, I do some of the, the, the pre-posting and scheduling. I, I scheduled this week out because I knew I was going out of town. Uh, the, the one thing I struggle with and I hear, and I've even heard different things in the media or social media seminars this week, uh, the first two days anyways, is how often do we post? I know you said earlier, do it every day as often as you can. Um, a while ago it was, if you post too much, people will opt out. That was that's a couple years ago. Now it's do it all the time and I'm kind of confused or I hear different things even in this format um, in the last two days. Some people are I took notes in the meeting yesterday three to five times a week and here I'm hearing do it every day. So I, is no, there a damage used, if you do it too to, often? We used to be, did everybody hear his question? We used to be very sensitive to overposting when it was going to 100% of your audience. When Facebook changed their little thing so they could make more money on Facebook ads probably and they only go to maybe 15 percent of your audience I, I don't think that's as big of a concern at all and and I think it's very we think it's very important to post every day and I think you can post two or three times a day because you know if the ones that are the really engaged with your page see multiple posts they're not going to be the ones that are going to opt out so I, and I know people have People have different, you know, strategies. Ours is probably more is better. Well, all right. Um, well, I hope you got their two, uh, their two faces etched in your brain. They'll be around for the next day and a half. So, you know, you can stock them. It's okay. Get some more intel. Get some more information. Uh, we hope that your time here with us today has been beneficial. We appreciate you sharing it with us. And uh, we'll be around in uh, questions. Uh, please don't hesitate. Thank you very much for your attention. We appreciate it.